couple of things to get out of the way. First, the sermons that I'm not going to preach because you've already heard them a hundred times. Uh, sermon number one, joy and happiness are two different things. Happiness is something which lasts for a moment and is somewhat superficial and on the surface. But when we say joy, we need a very deep quality that abides in the depth of the soul and is permanent. You already know that. The second sermon you don't need to hear is that joy does not come from wealth or material possessions or power or pleasure. Those things can give happiness for a moment, but if we are seeking that deep permanent, abiding quality of joy, we know that those superficial things do not give it. So now we come to the sermon that does need to be preached. We need to ask the question, where does joy come from, that real, deep, powerful, permanent joy that changes our lives? And in order to figure that out, I went into a Old Testament and the New Testament, and I looked for all the references to joy, and I tried to see what the source of joy was in all of the Bible stories, and I found a very common and powerful theme that I think will be helpful for you. In the Old Testament, the people are always filled with joy at three particular events. Number one, at festivals, there is joy. Number two, at the time of sacrifice, there is joy. And thirdly, when God makes his presence known to the people, there is joy. And the common theme that binds all of those together, the festivals, the sacrifices, and the revealing of God's presence, is this. Thanksgiving. All the festivals in the Old Testament are festivals of thanksgiving. And whenever the people focus on what good things they have in their lives, they are filled with joy. Likewise, all of the sacrifices are about thanksgiving. Thanksgiving that God has forgiven us, that God is with us, that God says, I will be with you in the future. In all of those instances, people are filled with thanksgiving, and out of the thanksgiving, there comes joy. Likewise, on those occasions when God reveals his presence, the people are filled with thanksgiving, and the result of thanksgiving is always joy. So in the Old Testament, the answer is really simple. Where does joy come from? Joy comes from thanksgiving. I turned to the New Testament and found that that theme was consistent and was emphasized again and again. On all of those occasions when the people experience joy, it is because thanksgiving has come first. At the time of the announcement of the coming of Christ by the angels, the angel says, I have a message that will bring great joy to all of the people. At the birth of Christ, the people were filled with thanksgiving, and so they had joy. At his entry into Jerusalem, they were thankful, then they had joy. At his resurrection, they were thankful, out of the thanks there came joy. Likewise, in the Acts of the Apostles, whenever the love of Christ was shared with someone else and they accepted that love, the people were thankful and then they were joyful. When the people sat down for that meal within which they remembered the wonderful love and all the gifts of Christ, it was a meal of thanksgiving. And out of that meal, there grew joy. So again, the New Testament says, joy comes from thanksgiving. It's interesting to note with the communion meal, the Greek word for that is eucharist. And the root word there is charis, 
And the word charis, in fact, is synonymous with gift or blessing or thanksgiving or joy. And so after reading through all of Scripture and figuring out for myself that thanksgiving and joy are bound together, I come to the very end and realize that the Greeks actually use the same word, charis, means joy and thanksgiving. So if you want to have more joy in your life, what you must do is give thanks more and focus on those things in your life which are positive and good and blessings. And if you do that, joy will naturally grow up. I'm telling you that because sometimes in life we focus on what we don't have. We focus on what we have lost. We focus on the fact that somebody else has something that we don't have. We focus on our deficiencies and failures. And if you do that, thanksgiving drifts away and dissolves into nothing. And where there is no thanksgiving, there is no joy. Let me give you a very simple illustration of what sort of a person builds their life on thanksgiving and then has abundant joy enough to share with the people around them. About three weeks ago, I went to visit a member of this congregation 